What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Calvin, AKA C Smith. Next month, I'm planning to do Sea Otter Europe. And if you're not familiar with Sea Otter, it's basically this huge bike festival. The US one takes place in Monterey Bay and it's got expos, gravel races, road races, uh, mountain bike races, mountain bike cross country races. So it's a really cool event. Oddly enough, I've never done this event in California where I'm from and where I grew up. But since I'm here in Girona, I figure why not? I'll sign up and do CR to Europe. The problem is I haven't done any structured training guys since February of this year. So I am not in the best of shape. I have zero fitness. And usually I would just go with train road and see what my predicted FTP is with the AI detection. But it's been a long time, I think two years since I've done a proper VO2 max and fat max metabolic test. There's a facility here in Girona called Science and Sport, and they issue both of these tests, so I figured I would give it a shot to see where my current fat burning zones are, and also to get my proper zone three, zone four, and zone five uh, training zones as well. Now, I'm kind of worried because I only have seven weeks to prepare for this event, but I went ahead and did it, and I figured I would take you guys along with me to talk to Mark at Science to Sport so that you guys could take something away from this process too. So enough talk, I'll jump into the interview with Mark and I'll check back in with you after the video so we can go over my results. All right guys, I made it to Science to Sport. I'm here with Mark, who is going to be running my test today. Mark, if you could just introduce yourself to yeah. the people. Hello everyone, I'm Mark. Uh, we are right now in the Science to Sport uh, lab in Girona. And uh, myself, I've been involved with the company since 2021 uh, we've been running tests we've been running bike fits uh, uh, since yeah since two years ago uh, the, the, the business was already uh, running in, in south africa which is a business that's been running for a long time but we introduced our um, a new lab in Girona for uh, in 2020 in the perfect moment yes yes and uh, yeah from that point we are doing testing we are doing bike fits uh, and coaching in uh, yeah in the center of the of, of, of cycling in yes, the world, right? in the mecca of cycling, Girona. Yeah. Today I'm going to be doing my metabolic testing, VO2 testing, and find my new fat burning zones on two and all that jazz. Can you just briefly explain what exactly the test is that we're doing today? For sure. The test that we're gonna we're gonna basically perform today. It's a at the end of the day, it's three tests we are performing in two uh, protocols which that we are aiming to, uh, to achieve and to get lighted values. So when the shuttle happens, fat max uh, values where the curve works. So if there's a, a, a spike on mid intensities, low intensities, how those um, graph and intensities in fat max uh, appears. And then we're going to jump off uh, to the second test, which is going to be the VO2 max test, where it's the protocol is completely different. It's, it's a test that it's a, a bit shorter, but at the end, it's what we the, the goal of that test is to get the maximum values and at the end right, right, get right. the max values yeah. and i think the vo2 max test is where i'm going to completely explode exactly yeah the first one <laughs> it's uh it's pretty okay the second one we are aiming for a failure for max yeah after the test like what information will i have will it tell me my lactic threshold or can yeah, you briefly I'm, explain that yeah for sure um what uh, when we finish the testing then we're going to do all the analytics and uh, obviously we're going to do them on our laptops and after that you're going to receive a report which you're gonna have information regarding anthropometrics, we're gonna do now. Uh, we're gonna get all the values regarding the, all the measurements taken during the whole lactate and fat max test. That will show us exactly what we were spoken about, like the fat max curve awesome. plus the lactate shuttle, where this happens. Uh, that will be also in the report. And at the end, then we're gonna, uh, using the PPO, so basically the PO2 max test, we're gonna get the, the zones, the training zones, we're gonna get the, the threshold, we're gonna get the, the PPO, which it's kind of an idea or a, it's an approach of five minutes effort. Right. So that way we know uh, all that and you'll have that on a report. And like I told you guys, this is gonna be critical information for me because I'm gonna start training for Sea Otter and if people at home, if you're training for any event or you're just curious, this is the type of test that you definitely wanna do so that you know where you stand um, individually. After I get the zones, is there, how can I improve my zones? Is there a kind of workouts that I can do first, I'll ask? Basically, what we'll get from the report, it's also an, um, intensities, which that intensities will tell us at what points of your training zones and basically at what intensities 
do you work and what do you get out of it so at the end of the day what do you want it's to set a goal in that sense if you want to improve your uh, threshold values or you want to improve your fat max okay. oxidization you want to move your lactate all that information you'll have it on the report so it depends on how and what you want to improve you can target it uh, in one way or another that's awesome okay so you can really tailor my workouts exactly. after this test yeah to yeah. see what i want to improve on that's exactly. great we'll see obviously also where are you a bit more lack of um profile basically the metabolic profile will get that will will inform us of what you can improve so that's pretty much what, what awesome. we're gonna get from and now does diet at all play a role in improving any of these zones i mean regarding the zones or regarding the performance itself obviously diet and having a nutrition uh or already like a scheduled will help on uh, on performing the, the sessions and at the end of the day being able to perform higher volumes and at the end it's it's a ball that's getting bigger and bigger so the more um stuff that you can do around uh, the the training itself will help training okay. um, but it will it it doesn't affect the training itself i don't know if i explain myself right it's yeah. it, it's environment that helps the training so, so i got you so they kind of work together the nutrition exactly. and the exactly. training it's, okay it's uh yeah one help each other what type of foods do you usually recommend to riders when they want to do these workouts like high intensity car more carb focused and then uh i mean zone two. one thing that we will get from the report is how much carbohydrates you use during okay. the different intensities also the fat so we'll be able to know a bit how your body works and what your body uses um but i'm not a nutritionist so i can't tell you right now if you are you need to get this amount of carbs per hour or what it is but uh for sure that with a bit more knowledge of what you are currently burning uh, you'll be able to get uh, an, a proper idea of, uh, of what exactly for certain type of sessions. Uh, so I can actually just take this and then maybe go talk to a nutritionist yeah. after and yeah. kind of use exactly. both. Match, match the sessions yeah. that plus the, the nutrition on the session and pre-session, which is it's really interesting. That's awesome. So for the higher intensity and then the fat burning zones, does rest and recovery aid this process at all once we know my zones and then I start working out? How important is like me getting rest and recovering properly? I mean, it's uh, training is basically the balance between impact and rest. So the more impact you put, so the more training you do, requires a resting period. So it goes again with the nutrition. It's something that it's one hand, it's important that you perform the sessions, you do your job, but at the same time that when you're resting, you are resting. Right. So uh, if you have a rest day or you have, uh, you have to sleep, have a bit of track of how you're sleeping. If you're sleeping good, the conditions are, are good for you to recover properly. So it's really important, yeah. not just for uh, for like low intensity or mid intensity sessions, for every type of session, just workloads needs good rest. So train hard and, and recover rest. hard. And yeah. recover hard. <laughs> it's always hard, everything. Yeah, yeah, we need to, it's, it's important to keep the, um, the recovery, as, in, as to me, it's as important as, as a training. Okay, so, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and do the test and see where I'm at. I have not done one of these tests in probably two years, I was telling Mark. So I'm very interested to see where I land and then I'll probably try to compare what I get today versus what I had in the past. All right, so let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I hope that interview was really, really helpful for you. Now let's go over my results. The first thing I wanna check out is my fat max. Now if we jump into the computer, you can see here my maximal fat oxidation rate was at 0.48 grams per minute. And this was around 170 to 200 watt range. And this is definitely something that I wanna improve. I need to do some specific zone two work to improve this. And it's actually good to know because I have been riding at a different power range based on 
the information that I had from two years ago for my fat burning zone specifically. But I was under the impression that I was able to metabolize fat as fuel at a higher heart rate um, than I currently was able to in this test. So this is good information for me. And you can see on this chart here where the fat oxidation rate and the carbohydrate oxidation rate, that 0.48 range which seems to be right here is when I start using more carbohydrates as fuel, just like Mark was talking about. The next thing I wanna show you guys is my new zones. So these are my new training zones and it's very good for me to know this information as well. The last thing I wanna show you guys here is basically my, my impression from this is that I need to do some sweet spot in threshold work. Uh, Mark essentially is recommending that 270 to 290 range. And that's no surprise to me because I have not done any structured training. I have not done any sweet spot or threshold work. So it's no surprise to me that my lactate accumulation point is around this range. So I hope this video was very helpful for you guys. Leave a comment below if you guys have any additional questions. If you're a coach or a nutritionist and you have some additional information, please share that in the comment section as well. Other than that, guys, talk to you soon and I'll keep you updated on my training journey.